Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, I will want you to consider subscribing to this channel because I'll be sharing many insightful legal and political gist here. And if you have subscribed, welcome back. In today's series, we are going to look at the reasons why canoe judgment is absurd and needs to be reversed. You see, Nigerian legal system was fashioned after the British legal system of common law. All lawyers were exposed to this Nigerian British knowledge right from year one in their undergraduate studies. And if you study outside Nigerian jurisdiction, you will never be allowed to practice in Nigeria until you take it as a course in Nigerian law school, which is called Bar Part 1, and pass it before you even start studying Nigerian law school courses that are called Bar Part 2. I guess you may ask, what is in this course? Well, this course teaches how Nigerian courts should administer justice, it educates how judges carry out their heavenly duties, how they set their rules and deliver judgments, how they treat their judgments, judgment of lower courts, and likewise how judgments of superior courts must be obeyed, no matter the flaw and error detected. This is the knowledge that every aspiring lawyer is exposed to at his tender school years. So what happened in Abba Kabir Yusuf's case? He was obviously elected into the exalted office of the executive governor of Kano State under the watch and supervision of Einek, which resulted into him being sworn in. Aggrieved with the development, the APC dragged the NMPP and Einek to the Electoral Tribunal, where the tribunal declared that the APC proved some considerable unsigned ballot papers, which according to them should be deducted, which made Gawuna to have the highest number of valid votes. Upon appeal by the NMPP and its governor at the Court of Appeal, the Court of Appeal deviated and descended into the arena of litigation and declared that Abba was not even an NMPP's valid candidate to begin with. But does the Court of Appeal have jurisdiction to make such pronouncement at the time it did? In my humble opinion, it does not have bias to make such declaration, since issue of qualifications party sponsorship and primary election are purely pre-election and party internal affairs, which neither the court nor the candidate of the opposition have the power to meddle into it unless it was a member of the party that, aggrieved, that is aggrieved and sues. Let us look at the case of Abuye and others by his PDP and others. The same court of appeal in Portacourt Division just last year held that a political party is not allowed by extant electoral act 2022 and the constitution of the federal republic of nigeria to sue another political party in a bid to challenge the nomination of the latter party's candidate elected from primary election conducted by the latter political party and seeking to prevent the INEC from acting on the list of candidates submitted to it by the political party suit also, in the same court of appeal this year, Makurdi Division, in PDP and others by Sis Anik and others, the justices held that, as read by Justice Biobel Judge, in the light of all I have stated above, it seems clear to me and I so firmly hold that by whatever canons of interpretation employed on the provisions and wordings of Section 285 sub 14, Paragraph C of the Constitution of Nigeria 1999, as amended, it can neither accommodate nor confer any local standing on one political party to challenge the internal affairs or planning, preparations and holding of the primary election of another political party. It, it is important to know that pre-election matters such as primary election, nomination and disqualification of candidates are all exclusive preserve of political parties and nobody including members of the party have right to challenge the outcome of a primary election except those that actually participated in the primaries. A court will only intervene if there is violations by the party of its constitution or its regulations. It is now time for the Supreme Court to save the judiciary from the obvious shame and allegations of corruption which will greatly impact the confidence of people on judiciary and justice delivery in Nigeria. The above case laws mention of the Court of Appeal and numerous unmentioned cases of the same Court of Appeal and even Supreme Court are the precedent that ought to have been followed by the Court of Appeal in the case of Abba Kabir Yusuf of Kano State. I think to cut the story short, the Supreme Court really needs to save the face of the judiciary at this critical time. With this, we have come to the end of today's series. 
if you have not subscribed please do well to subscribe for me and if you have any comment that you want me to reply you can drop your comment in the comment section i will try to reply all your comments thank you bye bye